Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome to the membership conferring ceremony here this evening. It's great to actually be welcoming you all here in person. We have, of course, conferred members over the last two years, but we did so virtually. And these are our first in-person conferring ceremonies since December 2019. Might be the first, but probably won't be the last this evening to say it is great to be back in person. As I look around the college buildings <coughs> at the various portraits hanging on the walls in the rooms and the halls, I'm reminded that we have two new additions since we last gathered here in 2019. Of course, the first is Laura Brennan, whose campaign and advocacy for HPV vaccine was recently said to have saved thousands of lives and who's the first non-medic to be honored in this way. And of course, our president, Professor Mary Horgan, whose pawn portrait was launched by Antishok Michal Martin just a few weeks ago here. So it's great to finally get some female representation amongst the portraits hanging on the walls. It's, uh, it's long overdue. But as you look around at these faces staring down at you from the framed pictures around this hall, know that today you are joining uh, their ranks as a member of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. This is an exciting moment in your careers and one that you have earned through your hard work, determination and dedication, as well as the support of those around you. So well done to everybody. And now before declaring the ceremony of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland open, may I, int may I introduce the platform party. We have our president, Professor Mary Horgan, we've got Dr. Terry McQuaid, Chief Executive Officer of the RCPI, Professor Anthony O'Regan, who's the Dean of the Institute of Medicine, Professor Mary Higgins, Vice President and Chair of uh, Obstetrics and Gynecology Exam Board, and I'm Professor Michael Keane, the Registrar. This is a meeting of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland for the purpose of conferring membership, which I now declare open. With your permission, President, I will now proceed with the conferring ceremony. Please proceed. Good evening, everyone, and you are very welcome to the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland to enjoy our membership conferring ceremony. The membership conferring ceremonies are held three times a year. These are important dates in the college calendar when there's an op the opportunity to welcome new members into the college. So I'll now ask the licentiates and members elect to stand and read the declaration with me. So if you could all stand, please. And we'll read this together. So I do hereby solemnly and sincerely promise that I will observe and obey the statutes, bylaws, and regulations of this college relating to members and will submit to such penalties as may be lawfully imposed for any neglect or infringement of them, including the erasure of my name from the list of members and the surrender of my diploma of membership received from the college. I further promise and declare that I will, to the best of my ability, do all things in the practice of my profession for the honor of the college and the good of the public. I further promise and declare that I will not keep open shop for the sale of medicines or endeavor to obtain practice or to attract public notice by any unworthy means, nor will I either permit or sanction the use of my name by any other person for such purpose or in connection with any secret remedy and in case of any doubt relative to the true meaning of this engagement, I promise to submit to the judgment of the college. I now call upon the president, Professor Mary Horgan, to formally admit the new members of the college to membership. I will now formally admit the new members of the college to membership. By virtue of the authority vested in me as president, I hereby admit you collectively as licentiates and members of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. Congratulations to you all. I'll ask all of our new members to be seated and then when I call your name, if you approach the stage and uh, the president will present you with your parchments, Professor Higgins will present them to the president.
Connor Abbott. Jack Allen. Danielle Barry. Aoife Burke. Saran Butt. Ruth Byrne. Mark Coyle. Elizabeth Dolan. Emma Dolan. Michael Doyle. Rachel Emily Drain. Alex Dudley. Shane Elwood. Colette Fogarty. Isabel Molly Godson Tracy. Derville Greeny. Ashlyn Ellen Hanahoe. John Harford. Philip Healy. Louise Catherine Kelly. Sarah Kenny. Seamus Lahan. Quiva May Lenahan. Michelle Marr. Neve Anna McCarthy. Connor McCaughey. John Peter McCormack. Barry Moran. Walid Nasser. Derval Ni Cahan. Connor O'Brien. Fiona O'Connor. Rebecca O'Farrell. Neve Claire O'Flaherty. James O'Hanlon. Sean James O'Malley.
Ashling O'Reilly. Anthony O'Reardon. John Peacock. Suzanne Kirsten Quigley. Shreyashi Sengupta. Nicholas Stefanovic. Louise Ward. Patrick Aidan Williams. Matthew Lawrence Williams. Anna Barbara Witkowska. Ask Professor Mary Higgins to address the new members. I'm not as tall as you are, Michael. Good evening, everybody. Um, it was with sincere pleasure that we are here today to congratulate you on what is truly a massive achievement of succeeding gaining membership of the College of Physicians. We as clinicians are personally aware of the hours and months and years of work you've put into this day, to the sacrifices you've made, both personal and financial, to reach the goal. You've made no small effort, and today your effort has, fought, has paid off, and you should be justifiably proud, especially in the work you've done over the last couple of years in working through the pandemic, in providing care to the people of Ireland, and in keeping going despite everything that you've been put through for the last while. As members of the College of Physicians, you've distinguished yourselves in the brightest and best physicians of your generation. You stand apart as the group of doctors who will lead the profession for the generation to come. We're at a turning point in how healthcare will be delivered to the people of Ireland. And all of you graduating today will have a command and responsibility for how our profession evolves in serving the needs of the citizens of the country at the most vulnerable points in their lives, where you make a real difference in your kindness and compassion, as well as your technical skills. Your graduation today leads you one step closer to the specialization in your chosen area and towards being a leader in our healthcare service. It marks a significant milestone in your career progression and your success. It also signifies a new responsibility you have to your fellow doctors, particularly to your younger colleagues, a responsibility to use your talents and skills that you have proven through challenge and adversity to teach and to guide your interns and SHOs and to assure, ensure that they achieve and maintain the same high standards of clinical academics and academic excellence that you yourselves have achieved in gaining your membership. You know very well these exams aren't easy. Many of you may well have been tested to your very limit, especially after I said all the work you've gone through the last couple of years. You know that they are a goal worth achieving. So please, guide your fellow doctors to the same success that you now, so now deservedly enjoy. I'm also aware that nobody who passes exams does so without a modicum of help. And I'm delighted to see so many of you with friends and family members today. Their support have got you here in no small measure, and I'm glad that they can rejoice and share in your success in this face-to-face -face occasion. My own exams were not so long ago, and actually I we were talking, myself and Anto, as we were, prof, excuse me, Prof. Reagan, we were talking as we were standing, talking about our own memberships with a little bit of PTSD, Anto, I'd say, would be probably fair to say. We've been talking about, I can remember being in that room, me talking about um, having a newborn baby and doing my exams. And yet we still got through it. And having the membership has brought us further in our career. This path to success is never either easy, but through your diligence, your perseverance, your professionalism, you've prevailed. And now that the exams are over, you no doubt have some spare time on your hands, or you may not. But it's important to use this period to take stock of your achievement, 
to congratulate yourselves, to be kind to yourselves, and to think about what direction you would like your career to take. And with that extra bit of time, we've been asked to invite you and to encourage you to join the Trainees Committee in working with the college to bring about positive changes and real changes that will make a difference for your fellow trainees. I'm sure of your engagement so far in the College of Physicians, you've all seen things that we can do better. And now that you've both the insight and the authority, we encourage you to work with us to make this college a better and a better place for trainees. So we can be proud to be members and fellows as a noble institution, proud of the fact that we can be part of receiving and providing world-class medical training, proud of the fact that we'll always strive for better, proud of the fact that we in this room are consistently working to safeguard the healthcare of people of Ireland. Thank you very much and congratulations. Now call on the President, Professor Mary Horgan, to address you. Thank you, Michael and Mary. Um, guests, members and fellows, a really warm welcome um, to today's event. This has been a long time coming. The last face-to-face uh, -face conference we had was in December 2019, and you know what happened after that. The pandemic came but today we're in a better place, and we're in a better place because of science and the belief of Irish people in the science. And the science has been produced by doctors, researchers, innovators, and these people in front of you are that future. Um, and I'm going to put it in context. Um, when I was uh, started off in medicine in UCD in the early 80s, in 1981, a new disease was described, AIDS. It took four years to develop a test um, to identify HIV. When SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID, happened or was um, um, identified in, um, on the 31st of December 2019, it took under four weeks to develop a test. So that's how far science has brought us. And I've no doubt that a lot of the scientific lessons we've learned during the pandemic will have huge positive benefits on uh, treating other diseases and indeed preventing them. Um, as an infectious disease physician for over 30 years, uh, when we started seeing patients coming onto the wards in March 2020, I was, I'm based down in CUH, I'm sure a number of my colleagues are here with me today. Even for me, who was very experienced, it was a really scary time because we didn't know how transmissible the virus um, was. Would we pick it up? Would we bring it home? How would we treat our patients? But we did um, what we always do, and I'm talking to my, my colleagues here. We put our heads down and we got on with the job to hand. And what the college was able to do was, um, and the college isn't a building, it's, it's collegiate members, it's, it's us as a group of doctors. We were able to rapidly um, disseminate a state-of-the-art uh, science on how best to treat our patients. And we did that through webinars to virtual platforms and used the talent, much talent we have in this country but also our diaspora who were more than happy to um, share uh, their knowledge. But interestingly, and having many of us trained in the States, our knowledge here in Ireland was more than that in the States at the time because the, um, the wave of the pandemic went from east to west. Um, and we worked uh, across all the faculties here. Um, I'm looking at the leaders, the future leaders in front of us because the college not only worked on the front line, um, our colleagues here and, and um, all of us, um, but also the college led on the pandemic response. Many of us were part of the NEFID, NIAC is housed in this, um, in, in this area. Many of us were involved in research um, in the rapid testing uh, rollout within the country. So that's what's expected of us by our public, and I think that's what um, you as the future leaders of medicine in this country and indeed beyond is expected of you. Um, every single person in the room was affected by the pandemic. I would say that different generations were impacted in, in different ways. There have been a lot of bad things about the pandemic, but a lot of good things have come out of it and will continue to come out of it. Um, as we um, learn to live with COVID. 
This college was founded in 1654. I'm delighted to have been elected as the first uh, woman and the first Kerry person also of the college. Um, I have to say that um, just uh, for all uh, the dubs who are probably here, um, given that we won the, um, the um, league on Sunday and look forward to uh, the July final. Um, what I would say is that n none of us, and, and Professor Higgins said this, um, we work as a team. We work as a team in the hospital, but we also work as a team with the support that you have from those people um, at the back of the room. The, the financial support, the cups of teas, the not slamming the doors, the looking after the children while you get to where you are um, at um, this part of your career. And this is a major career milestone for you. It allows you to um, practice anywhere in the world. The quality of training that we give here is second to none. Many of us um, worked, um, I, I worked in the States for seven years, and the quality of that bedside teaching uh, that we're renowned for here um, was much valued um, elsewhere. And while many of you may want to go away, be sure to come back. Um, it really is important that you contribute. Um, the, what, what I would say to you from, and I suppose from personal experience, and I'm sure I reflect the thoughts of my colleagues here is be ambitious, follow your dream, there will be twists and turns as there is in life, um, but also in your professional life, but persevere. I certainly, when I got my, my membership 34 years ago, I never thought that I would be um, president of the College of Physicians, but I took the opportunities that came my way. Were they always easy to take on? No, but um, I, I never regretted doing any of them, even the ones that didn't turn out as well. But you learn from your successes, uh, your failures as well as your successes. So do be ambitious, follow your dream, do what you feel is right for you in your career, and you will achieve your potential and be, and be fulfilled in your, your personal and professional life. I want to acknowledge the people who organize the exam. There's a lot of machine that goes in um, behind it. And, and from a medicine point of view, um, Professor Anthony O'Regan, along with the director of exams in medicine, uh, Dr. Lucianne Behan, uh, Professor Kathy McHugh, uh, Dr. Helen Chewett and Dr. James Jameson, along with uh, Colm Small and Sinead um, Freeman and, her, uh, and the team in the college who really ensure high quality exam, um, something that our CEO is particularly proud of, uh, Dr. McQuaid. Um, what, uh, just finishing up by saying, um, wish you well on your personal missions. Be sure to follow that dream and be, amb be ambitious in your plans because you are that good. Uh, congratulations and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, President. That, that completes the conferring ceremony for membership. We'd ask that guests remain here in the Corrigan Hall while the group photograph for new members takes place at the main entrance hall and a reception will follow the group photograph in the Graves Hall just next door.